Okay, so one of the things that I want to cover in this podcast is how does your thyroid impact your blood sugar stability? So remember, uh, in order to have stable energy throughout the day, to have normal brain function, you have to have glucose that's released at a stable level throughout the day. So if your blood sugar levels spike up or your blood sugar levels spike down, you can have severe changes in energy and your mood uh, and uh, uh, also end up with uh, you know things that can activate autoimmunity and flare-ups, which is never good if you have uh, Hashimoto's. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is, is do you have a blood sugar issue? And this is really important if you have Hashimoto's because not only do thyroid hormones impact blood sugar stability, but your blood sugar fluctuations may really be a factor that triggers your autoimmune response. So there needs to be a, a balance between both of them. But the easiest way to know if you have any type of blood sugar issue is just asking yourself what happens to your energy levels after you eat. And there's three possibilities that that can happen after you eat a meal with your energy levels. One possibility is there's no change in your energy and uh, you just aren't hungry anymore. You eat a meal, there's no energy change, and you're no longer hungry. So that's a normal response. So let's talk about the other things that happen. The second thing that can happen is you eat a meal and you feel like you can function again. So before you ate your meal, you may have noticed you had like blurry vision, you had shakiness, lightheadedness, you were angry, you were irritable, you couldn't think. And those are all signs that your blood sugar was low, that you were actually in a low blood sugar state, a hypoglycemic state. And then you eat and you're like, oh gosh, I can function again. I can think, I can focus, I'm not so irritable anymore. That means you have a hypoglycemia pattern, a low blood sugar pattern, right? And that can happen because you're going too long without eating or you just don't have enough healthy adrenal gland reserves to help maintain your blood sugar levels the, throughout the day. It could also happen because you, you just have eaten something really high in sugar, like your breakfast could be a fruit smoothie or an acai bowl all by itself, and now you get a huge spike of blood sugar, you know. Um, so those are common. The third thing that can happen after you eat that may impact your energy levels is you get really tired. If you eat a meal and you really feel like you need to take a nap, you need to close your eyes, those are signs that you actually have what's called insulin resistance, that you're on the way towards diabetes. You And it, what happens in those scenarios is you, you eat a meal so you have an increased load of glucose, but that glucose can't really get into your cells. And what normally gets glucose into your cells from your meals is your body releases insulin. But if you've eaten a lot of carbohydrates and sugar for a long period of time and haven't had much movement, your receptor sites for insulin become resistant and you get insulin resistant. And uh, when you eat a glucose meal, you, you, you even though your body may secrete insulin, even excess amounts of insulin doesn't allow those receptor sites to work so that glucose can't get into the cell and that glucose just sits out there so you don't get energy from it. But what happens is that glucose has to get converted to something. It gets converted to body fat. It gets converted to triglycerides. And that's a very energy demanding process. So when you eat a meal, you get really, really tired. So if you have either hypoglycemia or insulin resistance, meaning you either get fatigued after meals or you feel totally normal after meals, those are signs that you have a blood sugar issue. And both of those blood sugar patterns can really impact your Hashimoto's because blood sugar spikes um, activate a physiological stress response. So one of the things that happens in um, people that have blood sugar issues, let's talk about the hypoglycemia pattern first. If your blood sugar levels drop and you get shaky, lightheaded, angry, and irritable, what's really happening is you're going into a physiological stress response. And what has to happen to get you out of that is your body has to rapidly break down glucose and even break down proteins as soon as possible to get your blood sugar levels back up. Because your brain needs a constant supply of glucose. And this is why when your blood sugar levels are low, you can't focus, you can't think, you may get blurry vision, you start to shake. That's all related to your brain not having enough glucose. And your body will respond by activating the stress response and the adrenal glands will release epinephrine, norepinephrine, or also known as adrenaline, noradrenaline, uh, 
to then break down uh, proteins, uh, turn on cortisol to break down glycogen, so you can start to convert uh, protein and stored glucose called glycogen into a glucose. And that response is gonna activate what's called interleukin-17, and that triggers the autoimmune response. It adds fuel to the fire. So if you have Hashimoto's, as soon as you uh, keep having these blood sugar drops, uh, you're really flaring up your autoimmune response, and this could be reason why, despite being gluten-free and taking lots of supplements, you don't feel a lot better because you still have an active trigger happening all the time. Now, for people on the other side of it, the people that get insulin surges, one of the things you need to know is that if you eat a meal and you get really tired, What's happening is your body's, your receptor sites in your body are not working. So your pancreas has to put out much more insulin to try to get those receptor sites to work. That's where insulin resistance comes in. They're resistant to the insulin at normal levels. So your pancreas has to release much, much more in order to get glucose that came from your last meal into your system. But those insulin surges activate the inflammatory response and they actually activate something specifically called a RAGE inflammatory reaction. And RAGE stands for uh, receptor advanced glycation end product reaction, where the insulin will just cause those patterns to uh, trigger the inflammatory immune response that also activates the TH17 response, and that can promote the autoimmune response. So those are some things you need to know. Mm -hmm. So we know that blood sugar issues can trigger Hashimoto's, but let's talk about what happens when you're in a, in a low thyroid state, because it becomes a big problem as well. So when you have hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. one of the things that happens, if you're in an actual low thyroid state, so your TSH levels are up, you don't have enough thyroid hormones in your system, one of the things that takes place is your gastrointestinal tract, at the gastrointestinal level, you have reduced rates of glucose absorption. So you just can't absorb glucose very well from the gut. And that makes you susceptible to hypoglycemia because you eat a, eat a meal and it's not related to insulin resistance. Your gut just can't get that glucose absorbed very well. So you get a tendency to be hypoglycemic. In a hypothyroid state, there's also reduced uptake of glucose in the cell when there's low thyroid hormones. And both of those increase susceptibility to hypoglycemia. Now, on the other side of things, when you're in a hypothyroid state, that actually promotes further insulin resistance. And it also, in a hypothyroid state, you diminish the insulin to glucose response. And those things make you more susceptible to insulin resistance. Now, to put it simply, when you're in a hypothyroid state, you have a tendency to have your hypoglycemia get worse and your insulin resistance to get worse. So what's gonna be the way it expresses? What's gonna cause how it expresses? It's gonna be caused by what you do. If you eat a lot of carbohydrates, eat a lot of sugar or sedentary, you're gonna have insulin resistance, but if you're hypothyroid, it's gonna be much, much more significant. And if you're a person who tends to miss meals all the time, has, uh, sugar as a meal or something, you know, high, highly glycemic as a meal, um, and don't have enough protein or fat with your meals, you'll have a tendency to have this low blood sugar pattern, or if you go too long without eating, you'll be in the hypoglycemia site. And if you're hypothyroid, it just gets much, much worse. So there's like this intimate relationship between these mechanisms of blood sugar stability. And, and this is something that is part of what we call the web of Hashimoto's. And the web of Hashimoto's includes these vicious cycle pathways. Now, the relationship between blood sugar and this web of Hashimoto's is only one of many things that are something you need to know if you have Hashimoto's. If you wanna learn more about this web and how these things apply to clinical practice and what to do about it, please uh, check out the course I put together called Hashimoto Solving the Puzzle where I go into all these things in great detail and give you instructional information and workbooks and a process to go through this to figure out how to develop your own personalized protocol. And you can get that information at drknews.com, D-R-K-N-E-W-S.com. Thank you, drknews.com.